there is something magical that happens in a classroom of beginning heirloom sewers. When a new technique is demonstrated on the machine or on the serger, there is a ripple effect of response. We hear, wow, that's beautiful, or so that's how it's done. What every teacher loves to hear is, I can't believe I can do this. It really is easy. I am so excited about the ideas and techniques we have for you today by machine and serger. They really are easy and anyone can do them with just a little bit of practice. Watch and listen carefully. By the end of our lessons today, you'll be saying, I really can do this. I am delighted you have joined me in my sewing room. Shall we get started? This is a very fascinating ladies camisole. The top is done uh, with just traditional embroideries uh, attached using beginning heirloom sewing methods. The middle is two, three beautiful uh, machine embroidery designs on linen. Now, if you look at the bottom of the skirt of the uh, camisole, you'll see that it has a lot of embroidery. This is a pre-made purchase towel, and you can see the pink lining. Now, let's use all of that towel. So let's turn around, and we've used the bottom on the bottom of the towel on the front, but this is all linen, which was leftover fabric from the towel. Okay, let me turn it back around. Do you see this beautiful bottom of the skirt of this camisole? Okay, let's see exactly what was used for that. Aha, here is the towel. And you can see this is a purchased uh, towel and we use actually all of the towel when we use it in the back too. Let's see what that beautiful um, top, the yoke was made from. Traditional embroidery, some of them with entredeau on the edge, some with not, beading. And let's see the beginning, beginning heirloom technique to see how those are attached. If you have two pieces of seam allowance on either side, we're going to do stitch in the ditch. And can you see I've trimmed all that away? And I'm gonna go back and zigzag. All right, here it has been finished. Stitch in the ditch, and I have trimmed it away and gone back and zigzagged. And then when I open it, it has a beautiful finish completely sturdy and a professional finish on the back. And then this little fancy band, which is inserted right in the middle. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, my dear friend, Hope Yoder. Hope is the owner of Designs by Hope Yoder Incorporated. She's a Martha Pullen licensed teacher, a designer for So Beautiful Magazine, and a teacher at the Martha Pullen School of Art Fashion. Hope, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. And I love that blouse. Thank you. Camisole, I guess I should say. <laughs> It can be either. I just wanted to show you the different trims that Martha mentioned. There's lots of different varieties. We're going to look at the little entredeau holes. These are just pre-made holes in the fabric. And then uh, little flowers with pretty holes. You want to select a blouse that has a two-piece if possible. This has an upper front and a lower front. Here's the same machine embroidery design that's done on cotton netting so you can see the detail. One of the nice reason, uh, trims that I've selected, you can use a needle and thread over two holes. You bring it through the fabric, come back up. This gives it a nice pretty detail. With the beading, you can take some silk ribbon and do the same thing, go over and under, creating some nice texture. With the trims, you wanna make sure that you're adding them on top of each other, right sides together, and you wanna line the pretty holes over the trim and the top piece. Let's go to the sewing machine. I've selected a straight stitch, and I have a foot that has a blade in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and stitch in the ditch together, aligning the bar against the heavy grooves in the Entredeau. Entredeau. <laughs> so I'll stitch a little bit. Then if we'll go back over to the board through the magic of TV, I have a little bit already stitched for you. And you can see the very pretty beginning. The next step is we're going to take our seam allowance and we're going to trim this down. And then we're going to overcast doing what we call a roll and whip, which is simply a zigzag. So I'm going to take the fabric 
I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, is it about half of that seam allowance? Probably hold? about a half. Okay, okay. And I'll just trim off a little bit here. And I'm just going to take off my presser foot. And I'm going to put on a clear open toe foot. And then I'm going to select a zigzag stitch. Does the open toe foot mean you can just see it a lot better? Hope? I can see it okay. a lot better. And I'll go ahead and do a little bit of zigzag. Doing your overcasting. Right. And the trick is not to go into the holes. So I'm going to move this over a little bit. And as you stitch, the fabric tends to want to roll towards the seam allowance, causing a nice finished edge, which will look like this. One of the nice things that you can do is a fabric folding pen, and this is just a pressing aid. And you can go ahead and wet your seam allowance. And this helps you fold the seam allowance away from the holes in the opening. And then once you press it from the right side, you can see that we're ready to weave the ribbon over and under. And then when you're all done, you'd go ahead and weave your silk ribbon and your floss over and under, and this creates the front part of the bodice. And then you use all of your magic of the purchase towel and finish the rest of your garment. Hope, this is fascinating. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And now Hope has some sewing inspirations to share with you. Hope, I'm so excited about the things you brought to share. Tell us about your button sampler. <laughs> well, the show is about taking blanks and you can take uh, blank fabric embroider on it and make beautiful covered buttons. Look at this. And you've just done uh, machine embroidery, then cut it out and made beautiful. Well, this right. is very pretty to hang in a room. You could curl a coordinate that just as a wall hanging. How adorable. This was a little blank um, baby dress that we just did some machine embroidery and some corded wing needle stitches and some lace tape we shaped into a bow. And you know, you took that embroidery floss and wove it in and out of the entredeau there. Just like we showed earlier. Yes, just like you showed earlier. That is wonderful. Oh, this cute jacket that I, and little pants. Well, this is some so beautiful much. twin needle quilting. If you turn over to the back real quick, Martha, you can see that this is the same pique on the back is on the front. All right, now look, this pique is the same as this, and you did the twin needle quilting For some to make this textured fabric. Beautiful? That is such a cute little jacket. Oh my goodness, this is absolutely beautiful. Another, another blank white dress that we did a little machine applique, cathedral lace window sash, and then we just used the ruffler attachment to create a sweet ruffle. The ruffle on the bottom. And I have to tell you, this is my very favorite, the grandmother's sweater. Oh my goodness. Who was this made for? This was made for my mother-in-law. All her grandchildren with their names and their cute clothes. We have skateboard, little boy with skateboard and soccer ball, now, little ballerina. Do you know how many grandchildren I have? How many? 18. Oh. Is there any way I could maybe get one of these sweaters for myself? Well, we could put some on the back for you, Martha. Oh, nine hope, on the front and nine hope. on the back. You just don't know how I would love that. So you'll be seeing me in a grandmother's sweater too. This is adorable. Thank, Thank you, Martha. Thank you so much. And now Hope has a so booking idea for you. Hope with scrapbooking being so huge. I think it's just so much fun to add sew booking and put some sewing in our scrapbooking. What do you have here? <laughs> well, you're going to need a variety of colors of threads and more is always better, Martha. <laughs> so I wanted to show you that we're going to use a 30 weight. That's a little bit heavier um, than the 40 weight. We're going to use that on the outside of the tags. And you can get small spools, big spools, and the stabilizer you use we're is gonna a... We're going to use a uh, very soft cutaway type of stabilizer. Okay, got you. Okay. So we'll go right over here and I want to show you the scrapbook page that we've created using some uh, embroidered freestanding tags. You've got a spool, you've got a nice blank name uh, area for a name, serger if you're a serger queen. If you're a cut up, you do the rotary cutter and uh, I've got some beautiful laces and trim. Let me show you how uh, you can take this a step further. If you didn't want to put a name, but you wanted to personalize it, maybe make a grandmother tag or a proud mother tag, you would pre, uh, print a template on vellum paper. The next thing you're going to need is some fashion fabric, and we have white PK fabric and a very stiff type of interfacing. We're going to go and take 
uh, a photo and size it down and just print it on a fabric twill. Uh, this is a, a fabric paper that we printed through our inkjet printer. And then we've cut out the center of the tag. We can then take that and lay it over a photo to audition where we want the photo to show up. By the way, that happens to be my daughter. And so you can see I've placed a little bit of line around there with a water soluble marker so that I know it's going to fit in my little laptop. I'm gonna hoop my soft cutaway stabilizer. Color number one is the outline. You can see I've stitched that right through my heavy interfacing. For the next color, then I'm going to go ahead and trim all the excess uh, fabric away and trim away the excess photo paper, leaving just the sweet little photo. And then you're going to go on and continue to stitch the details of the keyboard and the mouse pad. Little satin stitch, pink for a girl. All of that in the hoop. Now. All of that in the hoop. And then if you turn this over to the wrong side, then you would need to put a fashion fabric on the back and then trim it away. When you're done, you've got this soft stabilizer. You're just gonna go ahead and melt the stabilizer using a heat a burning, like a stencil or wood burning tool. And then this is the final outcome. You've got a little laptop with a beautiful photo. Here's a sewing machine with a photo. And this is what it looks like if you just add some text using your machine embroidery. Fonts. Wouldn't that be a great scrapbooking page for someone who loves to sew? Well, I think I'd put that on my sewing machine case. Put that and on your sewing machine case. And when I go to my case. sewing classes. <laughs> Thank you, Hope. And now I have a segment for you called I Love My Serger. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, my very dear friend and business colleague, Kathy McMakin. Kathy is Executive Vice President of Martha Pullen Company. She's a Martha Pullen licensed teacher. She teaches at the Martha Pullen School of Art Fashion in Huntsville, and she's also a licensed teacher instructor. Kathy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Today we have some great techniques to show you, and those techniques are plackets. And um, we have people who are very afraid of making plackets, and today we're going to make those plackets on your serger. So we're going to look at a couple of garments first. Um, we'll look at this little day gown. Um, this little day gown was totally made on your serger. Um, the front has a piece of embroidered insertion and then lace insertions are attached on each side of that with your rolled hem and then we have rolled hem pin tucks on each side of that. There's lace edging on the bottom and around the neck and even some trims on the sleeves as well. But what we're going to talk about today is the opening in the back. The opening in the back, of course, helps you get it on over your head, and it's very necessary, so you can't avoid making plackets, <laughs> even though you might want to at some point. Um, but this is an open placket because it does not, it just is open in the back, it doesn't lap over itself. So that's one type of placket. And then the other type that we're going to talk about today, too, is this is a christening gown that we make in our serger licensing. And um, this gown is also totally made on your serger. So even if you look at the bottom of the, of the christening gown, all the lace pieces and embroidered pieces that are around the bottom were also done on your serger. Now let's look at the back of this dress. This dress is a yoke dress, and just underneath the yoke, to help you get it on the baby, um, is another one of those plackets, the opening in the back to make the opening in the back of the dress a little longer to make um, it ease in, in going over your head. Um, and that placket has a little lace um, that actually binds off the cut edge of the fabric. So that's a little fancier placket. So let's show you how to do that serge or placket. <laughs> um, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna pretend that this is either the back of our garment or the back of our skirt. And so the first thing that you do is you have to cut a, a slit down the center back of the dress or wherever you need your placket. And so you just take the scissors and you slice right down. Now with your serger, you have to open up up the piece so that um, these two cut edges now form a straight line. So if you look, even when you are trying to do it 
on a board. It's still a little, um, you have to squish in all this extra fabric and create a tuck or a pleat. So what we do sometimes is we actually do place it on something hard like a board or a flat surface. We make a nice little pleat with our extra fabric. We smush that fabric down into a nice little dart right here. And you can even take something like tiger tape or some kind of um, tape that you can pull up easily that doesn't leave any adhesive. And do you see how it would be much easier now to serge that having this fabric secured? So that's a, just a little trick that we do. Now, if you don't want to use that, you can certainly just open up your fabric and you're going to place it underneath your serger so that the edge of the fabric gets caught underneath that rolled hem. So we're set for a rolled hem and we're just going to serge very easily and slowly until the point gets to be about an inch in front of our foot. Now I can swing the second side around and I know you can't see this very well yet, but then I'm just going to punch that extra fabric down so that it forms that nice little pleat and I'm just going to press it down with my finger and then you're just going to surge right across it. You might catch in a few little pleats right there but for the most part those will just press right out. So we're going to show you what that looks like right here. And you can see that right down here, there's all these little uh, pleats in the fabric, but those would just press right out. Now, let's show you what it looks like when it's pressed. Now, this can be an open placket. So you can see it's just pressed nice and flat. And then if we want to go to the sewing machine and sew a little seven right here at the end, then we can actually create an, a closed placket. So you can see the seven. And then when you open it up like this, you let one side lap over the other. So you press it and there you go. Now, we're gonna talk quickly about a lace placket and that is the decorative placket. So we're gonna do about the same thing. Cut your slit, you need a piece of lace. Then you're gonna open out your placket and you're just gonna surge catching the lace in um, as you surge with your rolled hem and you can see the little dart is in there as well. You go to your sewing machine, and this time you just take a little dart on the fold of the lace. So you just put your placket edges together, sew your little dart in with the sewing machine. And then when it's pressed, you're gonna turn one side under, one side will, le will be left extended, and it's gonna look like this. And when it's pressed, voila, you have a placket. <laughs> Kathy, thank you so much. You're very welcome. And now I have some machine embroidery ideas to share with you. I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Pam Mashey. Pam is Ambassador of Education for Baby Lock USA. Pam, welcome to the show. Thanks again, Martha, for having us. Today we're going to look at floral accents. And floral accents certainly give us a wide variety of different types of different little accents, just like it says, to place on any type of, of project that we're working on. Whether as we have here, a set of beautiful his and her pillowcases where they can coordinate, be similar, but not exactly the same for the his pillowcase or hers. On this table linen, so many times we have opportunities to, to incorporate designs that are needed for both corner and center designs, and then also to have a monogram. Now, all of these designs are coordinated with each other, and we can choose to extend the size that they are, create borders, and then also bring them into garments. Here we have a beautiful little sweater, and again, so many times we can purchase blank items and incorporate little motifs that add that extra little touch to a very simple uh, item. So let's look over here at the computer and see what we're going to find in floral accents. 
Now with floral accents, we have again a very wide variety of different options for, for, from, for, for us to choose from. We can select to either have a design where it's complete. As we see here, it's a floral motif with leaves on either side. But many times our project will only allow us to sew a center flower with one set of leaves. So we can choose and remove and stitch just one side of that leaf motif. We can sew to choose to sew just the motif itself. And we can also select a wide variety of different types of motifs to choose from to place in the center of our project that we're working with. And as you can see here, we have again a real wide variety. Now when we select the center, and we have the style of branch. Many times we want to have a different style of branch and it's going to arc in various directions. And when it arcs up or down or sideways, we can certainly follow a contour of the project that we're working on. We have corner motifs to choose from. And in those corner motifs, there again are a wide variety of different types of corners. We can scale the size of that corner shape, whether we're needing it to be five inches or eight inches to fill our hoop and to fill the corner, it's going to give us that variety. The vine selection again, we have many selections to choose from, whether we want to have a very intricate style of vine or we're wanting a very simplistic line of vines to choose from, we have it all available to us. We also again can choose a different style of, mot of, of a, a pattern, of a, of a frame that we're wanting to choose from. So when we choose our motif, here you can see again, we could have the motif just as we saw on the tablecloth to match the borders and the corners that we're working with. Simply take these motifs that we've created and place them on your jump drive or directly connect them to your with your USB cable to your sewing machine and you'll have wide variety to choose from. Pam, who would ever thought that we would be using a computer to do our designing and then go to the sewing machine with it? Absolutely. Well, the embroidery machine, I guess. The I embroidery say. machine, that's Thank right. you so very much. You're very and welcome. And now, won't you join me while I share a beautiful piece from my vintage collection? This beautiful Ayrshire dress is a part of the collection of Wendy Shane. It is an absolutely magnificent dress with a beautiful little sleeve that has one, two, two parts on the sleeve and then a really, really sweet ruffle. We know it's a very early dress because of the low neck. The Ayrshire embroidery is absolutely exquisite. It comes in the pieces down to a V in the front and then has this traditional panel. I'm going to open this skirt up so we can go down and you can see the beautiful embroidery that's really pretty narrow at the top and let me pull this around. And then it begins to get wider as it goes down. Can you see how it goes all the way down and it gets wider with the flowers and the leaves and it has the beautiful stitching in between some of the petals and some of the leaves. The Ayrshire work was done by hand. Now I'm going to show you the back of this little dress because this was traditional with these scoop neck dresses. There was a casing and there was a, a string of some kind. It really looks almost like a very fine shoestring, but it wasn't. That according of some kind. And it pulls the dress up so it would fit the baby to be passed down through generations. Also on the waistline of this little dress, it's closed with another cord so the waistline could be pulled in and fit the babies. And you will notice it has a very long placket, which was also traditional with these early dresses. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had a good time, but more importantly, I hope you have, and I want you to come back next time.